Hi, Peter Brusso here. Today I want to teach you how to make a flyer that really works. It's really important in marketing to really get good materials out that people want to take action on. So today I want to teach you a little bit about a flyer and now let's go on screen and see what it's all about. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the, how to make this flyer work, and um, this is a design environment for a PDF that I've created, so bear with me. We're just going to go right through this on the screen. The most important thing, or well, the first most important thing about making a flyer that really works is to have a good action graphic. That means a graphic that leads your eye into your headline. Very, very, very important. Most don't. I uh, just discussed something with a client this morning, and he had a person looking straight at you, and your eye wandered around. It was it was uh, quite awful. But so the first thing you need to do is to get a good action graphic. Let's take a look at this briefly. Here's an action graphic, of course, that has arrows, some motion that leads you to your headline. Here's an, an a poor action graphic that doesn't lead your eye anywhere. So the first and most important thing is you get an action graphic that leads a person's eye. First it attracts it to it, then leads the eye to the headline. All right, now let's take a look at the next piece. Yeah, it's over on the next page here. Okay, now I use this of course for martial arts, this example is for martial arts. The second rule in having a good flyer that works is you must have a you or an implied you in the headline. You will learn to protect your family, exclamation point. Very good. You is important. Here is a poor headline. Defense doesn't need to be difficult. It has no you in it, no implied you at all. Every successful headline has a you in it. It's about benefits. It's about what's in it for them. And that's got to come through in spades. You only have a few seconds to actually capture somebody in the headline and lead them to the next most important piece is the subheadline. Let's take a look at that now. In a subheadline, you, again, you, you have about eight seconds now to capture a reader. And again, utilizing a you if you can do it. Headline, you will learn to protect your family. Exclamation point. We saw that before. Subhead. And this will happen in 30 minutes. Imagine the wonderful feeling of walking without fear. In this seminar, you will dot, 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 dot. And you can see that I've used a U. I've also painted the picture of, of a feeling, what it's going to feel like, what the benefit is that they're going to get out of this class in a true feeling benefit. Very, very important for the the subhead. Let's go to the next page. Now, the whole point of a headline is to move them, capture their attention. Uh, second, the headline, ha the, the subhead has to, of course, cap more interest them and move them into the ad copy. The ad copy should be in bullet points like this, for example. And remember, these are good. These are yous. You will learn to defend yourself against a violent attacker. It's easy to learn. It's fun to learn. You will come away empowered. You won't have to feel uh, fear being attacked ever again. Your family will walk without fear. You will get a self-defense weapon as part of your class. And this is, of course, a flyer that I use for my self-defense weapons site.com. Here's poor, a poor example of benefits. The self-defense weapon comes in, co in the color black. Okay, this is a feature. It's not a benefit. Only 30 people in the class. Another feature. I can only teach 30 people at a time. Self-defense tool fits in your hand. This is what actually what I call a fresh fish statement, like duh. Of course it fits in your hand. Nine models. A uh, self-defense tool comes in nine models. Again, fact. Uh, only strong people can defend themselves. A terrible fact. These are not benefits. These are features. These up here were in fact benefits. Benefits sell and features don't. Now repeat that. Benefits sell and features don't. Get that ingrained in your head. Let's take a look at the next piece. All right. Every good flyer, after you get through the ad copy, after you get through the bullet points, have to have a call to action. People want to know what you want them to do. In this case, good calls to action. Enroll today, only 30 students will be taken. And then here's your call number. 10 more, 10 more student slots available, so call now. 
Another one, if you enroll by Friday, you get 10% off your tuition. These are all factual call to actions. Don't put these down if it's not true, but every call to action has some truth that motivates people to take action. Could have been, don't walk with fear anymore. Uh, learn, to, le learn to protect your family. Learn to save the lives of your loved one. Call now. So you're trying to get them to call now. Here are poor, a poor call to action. Come by and sign up. Big deal. It starts next week. Big deal. Could be true. We can handle all those who are interested. None of these really compel you to pick up the phone and make that call. As you can see, these have a higher chance of making you do something, take that action, or as we call it, call to action. Let's see what the next piece is. All right. Rule number six. You got to add a phone icon and ones that are ringing off the hook like this one that are pointed towards the telephone number or better, but a phone icon on a flyer will increase the response rate by 25%. We don't know why. These are just the facts. So obviously include a phone icon, preferably not this one per, per se, but one that rings off the hook and forces your eye into the telephone number, which by the way should be at the bottom right in the same font size as your headline. It should be big. It should be noticeable. They shouldn't have to scrounge around for that number. It should be there. In America, in the West, we, we, we read top to bottom, left to right, the most important pieces of your flyer in the bottom right-hand corner. That's, of course, your call to action and your telephone icon and telephone number. All right, so let's, let's take another look. Do not use inverse video. I see this all the time. Inverse video is this, lighter lettering on a dark background. If you take just a minute to look at this, this is the same ad copy up here at the top as they are at the bottom. It's 25% harder for the human eye to read inverse copy, inverse text, light lettering on a, on a dark background. Why in God's name would you ever put your important message in inverse video? 25% for your, harder for your, your potential clients to read. That is crazy, but people do it all the time. So don't do that. Real simple. All right, let's take a look now. If we put all of our stuff together, here's what it looks like. Here's our action graphic leading us right into self-defense class. You, all capitals, will learn to protect your family. Good headline, strong headline. Subhead, and this will happen in 30 minutes. Wow, that's pretty quick. Imagine the wonderful feeling of walking without fear. In this seminar, you will... And you will learn to defend yourself against a, a violent attacker. You've seen all these things before. They're very powerful. Down here, 10 more student slots available, so call now. Phone ringing off the hook. And our telephone number in the same font size as our headline. This is a very, very good flyer. So, without any further ado, I actually... Uh, taped a, a follow-up message to this, but if you like what you see, then please pass this 101marketingpodcast.com uh, episode over to other people, and I encourage you to peruse the site and enjoy yourself, and I'll see you right over on the backside here. All right, I hope you found that really, really interesting. Matter of fact, you can use a similar approach to your websites and other materials where marketing is, in fact, important. Uh, remember, it's about benefits sell, features don't. Benefits, benefits, benefits. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining me on this 101marketingpodcast.com, and I'll see you on the web.